am super excited about this video today. Why, you ask? Because I successfully dyed or colored the fretboard markers or dots on my Relic guitar. Why is that important? Well, let me give you a little backstory about this guitar. If you've been watching the series on this guitar, then you're well aware of what's been going on. If not, let me bring you up to speed. I bought this. It's a parts caster. I bought an unfinished body, unfinished neck. I finished both of those in nitrocellulose color and clear coat. I bought really good parts for the guitar. I wanted to make it sort of like a custom shop as best I could, so I didn't skip on parts. So just everything I did, I wanted to bring sort of up to par on level with American Standard or even a custom shop and as you can see it's relic I beat it up I aged all the parts myself so this video is not about that I made a playlist of about 30 videos if you're interested in that playlist click up here on this little icon and that'll take you to it so now more about the dots when I built this thing and I finished it I got to looking at it and something seemed a little bit off and what it was was the fretboard markers now when I ordered this neck I got it from Musicraft and I had the option of a couple different things for the fretboard markers I knew I wanted to get clay because I was going for like a 60s era 60s 62-63 Strat and those guitars had clay dots so when I went to select them there was a typical like white dots I guess plastic you could get pearl and things like that and they had a couple of options for clay so they had imitation clay I think real clay and they had aged imitation clay or aged clay and as you went up you know in, in the level of options it got more pricey I think the aged clay or the aged imitation clay was around $30 or more I didn't get it I really didn't even think about it I knew I wanted clay and so I went with imitation clay. Now in retrospect, I probably should have just, you know, paid the extra $30 and got the aged clay markers from Musicraft. But, you know, hindsight's 2020, right? So, again, when all is said and done and the guitar was finished, these were a little bit too white. Now they weren't stark white and they weren't bright white, but just with the sort of overall motif for the guitar, you know, it stuck out sort of like a sore thumb to me. So I wanted to age the dots. I wanted to make them darker. Now, why? Why, you ask? Is this a thing, you know, did I just make this up off the top of my head? You know, if you look at the old guitars, a lot of them, the, the, the clay has aged, and I believe, I've read about this a little bit, I'm not an expert, but I believe the clay uh, has sort of soaked up the oils in the wood over time, and maybe the oils on fingers as they've been played, and over time they get darker. Now, if you go and you look at custom shop model guitars that have been relic, you will see that the fretboard markers a lot of times are pretty dark. I'm going to show you a couple pictures a couple examples of those just from different custom shop models I've seen online. Uh, Wildwood Guitars is a good example. Music Zoo also has a lot of these. Even Sweetwater and some other vendors have a lot of examples of these types of guitars with the darker frets. Anderton's is maybe another one. So again, I'm just showing you a couple examples of different guitars, these dark fretboard markers. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different methods that I tried and did not work. Now, if you skip to the end of the video, I'll try to put the time step down in the bottom below in the information. You'll see the method that finally did work. So why am I showing you the other methods? Well, you know, if you see this option and you say, hey, this works, well, let me try this other method. Maybe it's cheaper, maybe it's easier. I wanted to show you that those don't, in fact, work and sort of give you proof positive. They don't really dye the dots the way you want them to or it just wipes off and you know it doesn't work at all, it doesn't hold the color. So the lighting I have on this guitar right now is pretty bright and so these are going to reflect more of the white. In darker light and in sort of normal settings, these look a little darker than they look on camera here. I may go darker, I don't want to overdo it so we'll see, but as I change the strings here and there, I may touch them up a little bit. The color again has not come off, it's not coming off, but you know these are sort of lightly aged I guess you would say and I may go darker. You always have that option. So check out these methods. as the video goes along I'll show you what products I use what methods I used and in the end the actual color stays on these dots now I haven't seen anybody else successfully do this I'm not trying to toot my own horn I'm just saying that I'm, I'm happy about this because I think a lot of other people could probably use it you know if you got a guitar that is maybe finished in nitrocellulose even if you got a guitar that's uh, finished in polyurethane and you know you're trying to relic it this may be an option for you to make your guitar look aged. Now I'm talking about, you know, markers that have already been installed in your guitar. There is an option to go in, drill these things out, and use wood filler, different types of clay, different types of materials that, you know, either replicate or are actually clay dots, and you can get that same effect. But that's a lot of work, you know. Drilling out these things and filling them in and making them smooth, that's quite a bit of an effort. So if you want an alternative to this, then watch this video and see how I successfully did it. Now I do need to give you a little bit of a warning. 
the product that I used at the end of this video, the product that actually worked, has acetone in it. So if you've got a guitar that's finished in nitrocellulose like this one, be aware that acetone will eat away nitrocellulose. So we're talking about rosewood fretboards. Now, on the fretboard itself, it's not going to really matter, right? Because this is unfinished rosewood. It may have some oils, you know, that have been worked into it. But your dots, you can either take a little bit of sandpaper and, and scuff them up. But they, they should be sort of exposed and accepting of this type of method I'm gonna, that I'm going to show you in the end. But on the end of the guitar, your sort of edge markers here, if you have any nitrocellulose on your fretboard on the edge and you try to do this, you will eat away the nitrocellulose. So what happened with me, I don't know why, I think about this, maybe I got a little trigger happy, but down here, so this part is finished, right? It's finished in nitrocellulose. This has uh, oil on it. You can watch my other videos for more about that. But this part down here has nitrocellulose, nitrocellulose clear coat on it. Sort of hard to show you, but so when I went to do these dots, okay, I actually, I didn't really take off a lot. You know, thankfully I was not too liberal with the solution, but I did in fact take off a little bit of nitrocellulose. Now on the edge, it wouldn't have mattered so much, but down here where you can actually see the maple, it did matter. So I actually, unfortunately, took a little bit of that off and had to go buy some more nitrocellulose clear from the local hardware store and just give it a touch of spray. And you know, I had to tape off the guitar and all that. So take my advice, take my warning, be careful with this stuff. It does contain acetone and you may be able to use acetone. This is one method I didn't try. You may be able to use acetone as sort of the catalyst for the dye. I'm not sure about that. I haven't tried that method, but I am gonna show you a method that is successful. So again, bear with me. If this is something you've been looking for, hopefully it'll help. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I'm gonna do a test piece of dye on a couple of plastics just so that I have a, some kind of an idea of what this RIT dye is gonna do. This is the RIT Dye More Synthetic, and the color is sandstone. And the more is supposed to mean it dyes better and it's for, like I said, synthetic. So that means polyesters and plastics. So I don't have, ideally I'd like to have an exact material what I'm trying to dye. But since I don't, I just have a couple of plastic pieces that I'm either not gonna be using or I can do in an inconspicuous spot and not, have no harm done. So I'm gonna do that. There's some instructions online about how to spot dye with this and it says to do half of a cup of boiling water and two tablespoons of the RIT dye. So I'm gonna put the water, boil it, I think I'm just gonna do it in the microwave, and then I'm gonna mix everything in this cup. I'm gonna sacrifice my coffee mug. I don't think it's gonna do any damage, and it's not gonna stain that because it's already brown. So that's the idea. I'm gonna mix all that in here, and then apply the cotton swab, and like I said, I'm just gonna do a couple of spots on these various colors of plastic. This one's like a mint green from Stuart McDonald. It's really more of a neon green. And this is uh, the John Benson pickup cover that I'm not using. And this is an old Strat pick guard that I was messing around with, with, you know, aging. This is a the vintage amber tint on the edges there. And it's got some old coffee stain on it. Anyway, let's uh, get going and see how it works. So first, when it does say do this well shaken, it says do the two tablespoons to the one half cup of water. So I do have a paper towel handy here. And I got this, I'm in the United States, if you can't already tell, but I got this at Joann Fabric for under $4. I think I have like a first time user coupon for 4, 15, 20% off, something like that. But you can get this, I believe, at Walmart or a number of outlets, definitely Amazon. So but it should be under $5 regardless. I think, yep, I'm getting a lot more in the cup than I should. All right, time to reevaluate. I will say that out of the container, this stuff looks green, and I can't really probably show you down inside there, but you can see in the cap, it has like this hunter green tint to it. And I've heard people had some issues with it coming out pink even, or purpley. Here's the spoon, so you can see that. So we'll see. What it actually looks like. Okay, I was able to successfully get two tablespoons of dye in the cup. Now I'm going to boil my water and pour it in here, mix it together, and then we'll see what we can do with spot testing these pieces of plastic. Okay, just got my boiling water out of the microwave. I'm gonna pour it in here and use my spoon to stir. Stir it up really good. Don't have time to stir it up super great. I'm gonna take my cotton swab here, put a little dot right there. I see nothing happening at all. There's a little bit. And then on this one. 
So now what it says is use a hair dryer to set the stain in. So that's what I have here. Well, it says use an iron or like a iron for your clothes or a hair dryer. Maybe I should do low so I don't blow it all away. Well, I dried as much as I could with the hair dryer, and then I thought, well, I'm just gonna wipe away the excess. And I did, and I essentially just wiped, was able to wipe it all off. There's a little bit of shading on that. I'm sure you can barely even see it on the camera. There's a little shading there, a little shading. This has almost gotten all off, I would say. There's maybe a tint. So, I don't know, I didn't, what I didn't do is rough any of these up with sandpaper. So that may be a key factor, but all of these edges are not exactly shiny either. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna go from here. So I decided I'd just kind of go for this based on my simple test with the other plastics. It didn't dye them immediately or do this horrible job. So I figured if anything, it's not really gonna affect the dots. But one thing obviously that I need to do is take off the string. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna rough up the dots with some 1000 grit sandpaper. I've already done it to one and you can kind of tell when the shine comes off. It'll obviously kind of scratch up the fretboard a little bit, but it shouldn't matter. It's really fine sandpaper. And I'll go back over those spots, kind of clean them up up and then put some light lemon oil on the fretboard when I'm done, depending on, you know, obviously how the dots turn out. But yeah, so that's the idea. I'm gonna take off the strings right now. Okay, I scuffed up all the dots with a thousand grit paper and I just kind of got down low and made sure at the right angle that there wasn't any shine left on the dots. And then I'm just taking some painter's tape with the hole punch. This is kind of a standard one quarter inch of a diameter hole punch. I think the dots on these are like six millimeters. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's right, which correlates to essentially one quarter of an inch. And I I saw online or I read somewhere that someone did the same thing. I, I think they were doing like wood filler or making their own dots, but they, they employed the same kind of hole punch. So I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing. There's really nothing to it. The only thing is, depending on the hole punch, you want to make sure that it's like punching away from the adhesive. Otherwise, it's going to stick and make a mess. I've had that happen as I kind of learned how to do it. And like that. You don't want it to bunch up in there. You just want a nice, clean cut. And then obviously, once you get closer to the, the body of the guitar, the frets become more narrow. Okay, I was able to get a clean dot off camera. I think I just had to clean out the collection partition in there. So now I'm just kind of lining it up over the hole and making sure it's nice and stuck down around the dot. Okay, now we're going to attempt the die. Okay, here we go. Just gonna do this as quick as I can. All right, now let's try the hair dryer. So because this is water and this stuff is very liquidy, it's not like a gel, I really had to just, for in order for the dye to stay on there at all, I pretty much had to just soak each dot, which I don't know if I'm super comfortable with, you know, it's not really good to soak wood with water, but I think the tape is going to act like, you know, a surface tension barrier. You know, like with water, you get it on the edge of a glass, there's a bit of a surface tension there, it doesn't go anywhere. So I think it's going to be the same effect with the tape. I pulled one some of the tape off at one point to see if the fretboard was wet at all underneath and it wasn't. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a while. The hair dryer, I know the heat's good for it, but it really just blows it off of the plastic dot. So I'm gonna let it sit for a while and just kind of see what happens with that. Otherwise, I don't really think it's doing anything, but we'll see. So we'll try this one more time. I actually wiped it all off at one point just to see what was going on and uh, it looked like it maybe tinted it a little bit but it's really hard to tell. I don't, I don't really think it's going to take much, uh, I mean take the stain that much. 
Got my coffee here beside my dye, so gotta make sure I pick up the right one. All right, I'm just gonna wipe it all off at this point and see what happens. Take all the tape off. I'll wipe it off first. The instructions say to pat it or blot it instead of rubbing it. I don't really know that it makes a difference, but that's what we're gonna do. As you can tell, most of the color is coming off. I'm gonna do that. So, did it make a difference? Did it do anything? It's really hard to say. You know, I didn't exactly have the, the best baseline picture to take. I did take a picture before, but the lighting in this room has changed with the sun going down. So, that's gonna make a, a difference. Not gonna be a true comparison. You know, if I look at it right now, I'm thinking that there's some color changing on there that it did take, but when I I actually pulled the tape off and redid it at one point, but when I started rubbing it off with my finger, when I kind of dug into it, it just kind of came off. So I will say that this Rit Dye Color Sandstone is pretty good. I mean, I, I've never actually held, you know, an old Strat in my hand or an old Tele, see what the clay dots look like. So I don't have a real world experience to say, but the pictures I've seen online, this does a pretty good job of you know, when I had the, the actual color on there, it looked pretty good. So overall, I think it's pretty good. <coughs> I'm just kidding. God, yeah! So again, I don't know that it made much of a difference. Well, I can't say it didn't make much of a difference. Maybe it made a little bit. They're not really as dark as I wanted, but you know, no big deal. Uh, I think they're dark enough. They're not stark white. So I may try some other methods. We'll see, but that's kind of what it looks like right now. Okay, we're back again. I actually strung the guitar up and uh, kept it that way for a little while, over a day or so. And I got to playing it a little bit and I looked at it and I thought, you know, I'm just not sure that the color actually took. And, you know, like I said before, in different lighting, it makes a great deal of difference. In the direct sunlight, these look pretty stark white. So I wanna go a little bit darker, I think. So this is my new method, uh, method I heard about and I'm gonna try. Hopefully I don't ruin anything. But this is uh, called Clear Cleaner for PVC. And uh, what I'm gonna do is mix the RIT dye with this. And what this is supposed to do is sort of almost melt the top layer of the plastic. And so in doing so, it kind of locks in the color. Now this is completely clear. I've opened it up. It's really strong to smell, but it looks like water more or less. So I'm gonna use the same ratio of this to the dye that I used with water, which was, I believe, two tablespoons the half cup. Now this is only four ounces, so you know I'll, I'll make sure to do my ratio correct. But I'm just gonna put the, the dye straight into this stuff and shake it up and mix it. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, tape and the holes in the tape and the Q-tip application, and we're gonna see how it goes. So the other things I thought about doing besides this method was getting acetone. So I've, I've heard that being used before to kind of do the same thing sort of uh, eat into the plastic a little bit and lock in the dye. Now this, oddly enough, contains a little bit of acetone. It has, I don't know what these numbers mean. I'm not a chemist, but acetone 67, 64, one, and something else. But this is not pure acetone. The, uh, now price-wise, this was like 750 at my hardware store. The acetone, the smallest container, was about um, 6.99, so $7. It's about the same. And then one other method that I thought about trying is this stuff like by a couple of different people make it. Krylon Fusion is one example and it's like an aerosol spray for plastic, but it's supposed to supposed to like stay on and stick and not flake off at all. You know, that was the cheapest. I believe that was like $5.99, but I was hesitant to really hesitant to get an aerosol and start trying to spray on these dots. For one thing, I have to cover the guitar completely up and that would take a lot more preparation time. And I'm just not comfortable with putting spray paint of any kind, no matter what it is, on my, my fretboard because I don't want it to chip off and look cheesy. And so I'm gonna try this method. There's a couple things I'm concerned about. I'm concerned that it will actually eat away the plastic for one thing. The other concern is it going too dark and then the final concern is, well, I guess this correlates with concern number one, 
is if I ruin the dots, uh, I'll have to drill them out and replace them, which I do not want to do. So I'm going to do my test pieces again over here just to see what happens. They're not the same color, but it will give me an idea of how it reacts and what it looks like. So we're going to tape this up, do some tests, and we'll see how it goes. So I looked it up and wouldn't you know that four ounces equals half a cup. So if I use the same instructions as I did before, I will put two tablespoons of this into this stuff. So what I'm going to do, I think, is like a spoonful and a half. You know, I can't really take anything out of this, and this is the only can I have, so I have to go buy more. And at 750, it's not necessarily cheap. So I may go like one or one at a time, then do another half, do some tests on this spare parts over here, and see what I come up with. All right, so at the moment, I've got one tablespoon of the writ dye and the uh, can of the clear cleaner. So sorry I'm not closer with the camera to the specimens, but this is just the setup I've got and I don't want to, uh, I want to be as careful as I can not to get things anywhere. So this is what I'm dealing with at the moment. So let's see what happens. Okay, let me show you my results here. The first one, Hopefully you can see it is this pick pickup cover. Okay, so you can see at the top here, right there, there's a little bit of discoloration, it's sort of a pinkish color, but it's not coming off. It's not a really great way to show you that. The other pieces are a little bit more plain to see, hopefully. So on this one, you can see here and here a little bit. The only thing is it seems like the color sort of bleeds out to the edges. So I don't know, that's, now again, this is only one tablespoon in the clear solvent. Now, this is probably the, the best example or the best effect, this spot right here, and it's not coming off. And it's pretty consistent color. There, are, there is some darker shading on the outside so again, it seems like the color is sort of like moving. It's trying to separate out of that solvent. I think I'm going to put another spoonful in there because like I said, the, the color doesn't seem to want to stick. So, or maybe I'll try this. Uh, maybe I'll try this with like one dot and see what happens before I do the other ones, just so I'll have a comparison and then see where we go from there. Okay, here goes nothing. Wish me luck. I'm going to shake this up and apply it a little bit to this one dot and see what happens. Well, I did this dot here, and as you can see from this distance with the camera, there's really no difference. And I can tell you with the naked eye, as close as I can get with my eyes, I really can't see a difference either. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't see much of a harm in adding another tablespoon to this little formula here, I'm gonna just do that and then tape all these up. If it doesn't get any darker, it doesn't get any darker, I'm fine with it. I don't wanna go to any extreme measures and ruin it. So uh, I'll just be, I'll just be happy with what I got and not try to overdo it. And we'll just call this a, uh, I don't know, a failed experiment, I guess, or a, uh, a good effort maybe. So I'll, I'll do that and show you what I get and then we'll see what happens. Okay, I feel like a mad scientist. I feel like I've cracked the formula. I tried the clear cleaner with the dye and I, I really got kind of a ambitious, probably overly ambitious, and I like put the tape over it and I pulled the stuff on top of the dot, right? So it's like a puddle and hoping that it would soak it in. It didn't do really anything. I was able to wipe everything off and got kind of disheartened after that. But I tried the old Kiwi shoe polish. What I did, I'll try to show you. I rubbed it on and then I took my finger in some of this clear cleaner and just kind of blotted it a little bit. And now color is not coming off. Now I'll get a better close up image of what I'm talking about, but there's definitely a darker color, uh, more of a, a darker pigment now that I've done this method. So I'll get in closer as I uh, try another one and show you the difference. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. You can see these dots, they have a more of a tan color, tannish color than these over here. And this lighting is not the best. Let's just try to compare these four. There you go. You can tell, like with this one, it's a lot lighter than these two. And this is the Kiwi and the uh, Clear Cleaner method. So I'm pretty pleased that I'm just getting some kind of result with this. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm gonna keep going. I'll try to show you uh, how I do it. 
Yep, I feel like a genius. I've figured out the formula. These are the dots from the 12th fret on that I've colored, and those are the ones that I have not. I wish I could keep this lighting focused the right way. You can see there, these are the ones that I've colored, and those I've not. And I've even given it the uh, paint thinner test. I don't have the cleanest rag, but I'll try to show you what, what it does with paint thinner. As I wipe it across. So, here's paint thinner is not taking the color off. Paint thinner usually takes just about anything off. So there you go. Now the lesson here is for me, try and try again until you figure it out. Or in my case, if you buy a custom made neck from the dealer of your choice, in my instance, Music Craft, and they offer aged clay dots, just pay the extra $30 and get it. So I'm gonna do the rest of these dots and call it. So uh, you're welcome everybody for figuring out how to do this. <laughs> Again, I'm super happy that this worked out and take it and run with it. This is the stuff I got. Again, it's OD Clear Cleaner for PVC and good old Never Lets You Down Kiwi Brown Shoe Polish. That's the formula. And I will say, if I haven't already, I, I know I've said this is a music craft neck, but the dots that I got were synthetic clay or imitation clay. And that's so what that's what I have. I can't guarantee you'll have the same results on the type of plastic or dots that Fender uses, but I would give it a pretty good chance that you would have success. I don't have it figured out that I take.